yo soy Rory, hoy es viernes y estoy contento de estar aquí contigo. Gracias por uh, estar conmigo hoy. Hoy es uh, viernes, tenemos la lección, and today, I don't know if you've been watching or keeping on top of the news, but we had a crazy week here in Colorado. A major blizzard came through on Wednesday, and everything was shut down. Businesses were closed, the university where I teach was shut down, the campus was closed, so no classes, and, um, and the kids were home from school. And so when the kids are home from school, we're like, okay, this is still an office. I don't know if you, you've probably picked up on the idea that Leslie and I work from home here, uh, but we're like, kids, this is 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. This is not your house. This is an office. And so, you know, the kids can't go running around screaming and goofing off all day long because we have to try to get some work done. Anyway, <clears throat> so a couple of years ago, we encouraged the kids as we were talking about college and paying for that and everything, you know, you guys should really figure out what kinds of businesses you want to start so you can make some money because there's a lot better ways to make money than getting a J-O-B somewhere. And uh, so we've been sort of ingraining that idea in them that they can get out there and figure out something they enjoy doing and, and make a business out of it. So Caleb has a seasonal uh, lawn mowing and sprinkler blowout and kind of some maintenance, sort of home type maintenance stuff that he does, he's learned to do and, and uh, he makes money doing. And, uh, Eliana knew right away she wants to be a veterinarian, so she knew right away she wanted to make dog treats and sell dog treats. And Anna Sophia, our, our middle daughter, took a little while to figure out what she wanted to do, but she just got certified as a babysitter, and so she's working on, on that. Anyway, Eliana, uh, when she was home from school with the blizzard, we're like, honey, you have got to do some of your dog treats business. And so she, you know, she makes these little dog treats, these homemade dog treats. She's got a few flavors and she decided to do a huge sale during the blizzard, a 50% off sale. So I want to say thank you uh, to everyone who uh, purchased dog treats from her. You saw that she's got three flavors for the vegetarian dog. She has peanut butter and carrot. Uh, and for, for the carnivores, she's got chicken and bacon treats and she's got uh, elk and bacon treats. I love to hunt and so when we harvest an animal, um, she, um, she collects the heart and the liver and other organs and pieces that we don't eat as a family and she's uh, able to make those into uh, her treats. So anyway, uh, she sold out of all of her treats, we ended up making like six batches of treats. <laughs> and so me encouraging her to work actually interrupted my work a lot more than I expected. <laughs> but anyway, thanks so much for supporting her and her little business called Fianna's Dog Treats. If you've got a special pup, feel free to jump over to her website, fiannasdogtreats.com, and you can uh, see the different flavors and order some treats for your dog. Anyway, off to our real work for today. Hoy es <clears throat> ingresar al paciente. Some basic um, vocabulary and phrases and questions for a simple patient check-in or patient intake. That's what we're working on today. And we're actually breaking this up into a couple weeks. Today we're doing some basic questions. Next week we'll work on numbers and how numbers form an essential part of this. You'll see it here. Um, in today's stuff, but we're not going to take a deep dive into numbers today because it'll just get too long. So <clears throat> for now, we're focusing on basic información demográfica. So the kinds of things that you tend to ask about on that sheet where you've got your patient check-in form and your intake form are these kinds of fields of información. We've got nombre y apellido. So nombre is name, apellido is last name, right? So we're going first name, last name. And for folks that have multiple names, then you'd have segundo nombre, second name. So like Anna Sofia, our number two daughter. Anna Sofia, nombre Anna Sofia, segundo nombre, right? And then you've also got families who've got more than one last name, right? And so apellido, foster, segundo apellido, we don't have one, but it could, you know, be Velasquez Rodriguez or something like that, right? Okay, bien. <clears throat> Fecha de nacimiento, date of birth. Please don't ask your patients when their birthday is. 
<laughs> ¿Cuándo es su cumpleaños? Or, ¿Cuándo es su feliz cumpleaños? Uh, so, fecha de nacimiento es date of birth. Edad, age. Sexo, sex. Ocupación, work. You could use the word profesión, but it kind of implies, the word profesión kind of implies professional employment, which may not be an accurate um, sort of descriptor for people's work, so ocupación is better. Um, dirección, address, and número de teléfono, could be número de teléfono móvil or de casa, etc. Contacto, en caso de emergencia, so emergency contact. Proveedor de atención prim primaria. And so here, <clears throat> I've used proveedor, uh, depending on how your system works, You might say primary care physician, um, but with uh, PAs and nurse practitioners burgeoning, um, <clears throat> then we've moved over to proveedor, provider, so primary care provider. Okay, bien. Seguro médico, insurance. Motivo para la visita. So this is chief complaint or reason for your visit, right? <clears throat> Allergias, allergies. And cambios recientes. Cambios recientes is kind of where we start bridging into history of the problem or medical history, which we're not going to get into today, but I thought I would include it anyway, uh, asking if patient has noticed any recent health changes or changes in their health. So, bien. <clears throat> Nuestro paciente. Let's look at an example here of this información en contexto. Nuestro paciente. Nombre y apellido, Rory Foster. Yo soy su paciente hoy. <coughs> Fecha de nacimiento, el 5 de julio de 1976. 5 de julio, notice that it's not julio 5, it's 5 de julio, which also uh, fleshes itself out and maintains the same order when you write the date numerically. 5 de julio de 1976, which makes mi edad 42 años, 42 years, ¿verdad? <clears throat> Sexo, hombre. Ocupación, instructor de español, ¿sí? Dirección, 3598 Alpine Drive, Erie, Colorado, 80516. Now you might be noticing, whoa, Rory said those numbers and he actually used really big numbers and he didn't go digit by digit. It's not common in Spanish to go digit by digit. In English, it might be just fine if I tell you my phone number and I say that uh, my phone number is, mi número de teléfono is 303-684-5557. That might be common um, way to say it in English, but it's not so common in Spanish that way. In Spanish, it's more common to use the natural number, 303, or some sort of convenient grouping of two. And convenience like a relative term, right? Because for us, that means we got to use big numbers. So, 684, 684 is really what it is, 55, 57. So, keep that in mind. Next week, we're going to focus more on numbers so you can really nail that. And all you have to focus on really, is comprehending these big numbers and getting it right. Because, you know, you can say it digit by digit if you prefer to say it that way. And people will clearly understand you. It's just less common to hear people using digit by digit unless they're clearly understanding that you're on the struggle bus trying to figure out these numbers. Okay, bien. Número de teléfono. But numbers truly are hard. And so we're going to spend a, a whole lesson on them next week. Contacto en caso de emergencia, so emergency contact. Esposa, pareja, so esposo, esposa is spouse, right? So esposa, wife, esposo, husband. Pareja doesn't change, that's partner. So el pareja, la pareja, same word, pareja. It's not parejo, pareja, it's pareja for males and females, okay? So Leslie Foster es mi esposa. Proveedor de atención primaria. Dun, dun, dun. Rory's a bad patient. He doesn't have a primary care provider. Seguro médico. Medishare. See? 
Motivo para la visita, dolor de cadera. Ya, yeah, es verdad. Rory sí tiene dolor de cadera recientemente. <coughs> alergias. No alergias a medicamentos. Y cambios recientes. Cambios recientes, dolor de, ca de cadera. ¿Sí? Ok, bien. So, this is la información. But the real trick is, how do you ask the questions? How do you have these conversation around these things, right? Bien, so, some preguntas útiles. First of all, ¿Cómo se llama is, what's your name, right? ¿Cómo se llama? Well, it's possible that you would only get uh, Rory out of me. ¿Cómo se llama? Rory. ¿Sí? Uh, and then you would need to ask, well, what is your last name? Now, for the what is your, asking for all this information is not what you might think. You might think K.S. Sue. But it's not KS. You gotta go with cual. Cual es su. This is the way to ask about information. Okay? Cual es su apellido? What's your last name? Cual es su fecha de nacimiento? What's your date of birth? Cual es su dirección? What's your address? ¿Verdad? Y uh, cual es su número de teléfono? And you could say de casa or móvil. ¿Sí? ¿Cuál es su número de teléfono? What's your phone number? Bien, otras preguntas. So, ¿cuál es su? is a really useful question, and it is any time you're asking for information from people. KS is really different. That's asking for a kind of a definition. KS es una pantalla. It's a screen. KS es una computadora. Yeah? KS es un micrófono. Right? Okay, bien. All right, so that's asking for a definition. Qual es asks for information. So that's why you want to use qual es for those questions. Bien. Otras preguntas that the qual es doesn't really fit. En que trabaja? Or donde trabaja? Maybe both. En que trabaja? What do you do for work? Getting to that ocupación, right? En que trabaja? Or donde trabaja? And probably donde trabaja? Where do you work? ¿verdad? You could ask the question, ¿cuál es su ocupación? If you wanted to. But there's a common question too. Bien. ¿A quién contactamos en caso de emergencia? Who do we contact in case of emergency? ¿Sí? <clears throat> ¿Quién es su proveedor de atención primaria? Who's your primary care provider? ¿Tiene seguro médico? Do you have insurance? ¿Cuál compañía? Which company, right? Y su número de póliza, and your policy number, ¿sí? Número de póliza. ¿Tiene alergias a algún medicamento? Do you have allergies to any medications? ¿Qué le trae a la clínica hoy? What brings you to the clinic today? Talking about um, chief complaint or the reason, motivo para la visita, right? So, ¿qué le trae a la clínica? What brings you to the clinic today. Another way to ask that would be, ¿Cómo le podemos ayudar hoy? How can we help you today? ¿Verdad? ¿Cómo le podemos ayudar? Uh, yet another way to ask it might be, ¿Qué le molesta hoy? What's bothering you today? See? Or possibly, instead of ¿Qué? You might ask the question, ¿Algo le molesta hoy? Is anything bothering you today? If possibly, I suppose it's a routine checkup or something like that. Algo le molesta hoy? Is anything bothering you today? Bien. And now getting to noticing any kinds of changes in health or um, in how someone's feeling. Recientemente ha notado, recently, have you noticed, or ha tenido, have you had, recientemente ha notado, have you noticed, ha tenido, have you had, algún cambio en peso, any changes in your weight, ¿verdad? Tobillos o pies hinchados, so feet or ankles that are swollen, so swollen feet or ankles, ¿verdad? <coughs> Convulsiones, seizures. Ojos secos, dry eyes. Erupción en la piel, so any rashes on the skin, ¿verdad? Erupción en la piel. Dolor en el cuello, any neck pain. Tos crónica, any chronic cough. Diarrea crónica, chronic diarrhea. Dolor de pecho, any chest pain. Piel amarillenta, so yellowish skin. Piel amarillenta. 
you know, amarienta is kind of a funny word. It's yellowish. Uh, you could use the word for jaundice in Spanish. Um, it's ictericia, just like icterus in English, ictericia in Espanol. So that could be a substitute for piel amarienta. Dolor de espalda, back pain. Depresión, depression, ansiedad, anxiety. Pulso rápido, pulso rápido, like a fast heart rate, ¿verdad? Or palpitaciones, maybe um, along the same lines, palpitations, ¿verdad? Dolor en las articulaciones. Articulación is a great word for joint, right? So dolor en las articulaciones, ¿bien? Dolor en los músculos, muscle pain. Sangrados frecuentes. You might ask about easily bleeding or easily bruising. And instead of easily, I switched it to frequent. Um, maybe that's good, maybe it's not good. Uh, but it seemed more natural in Spanish to me. So sangrados frecuentes. Frequent bleeding or moretones frecuentes. Okay? Bien. Well, like I mentioned, so this, this is a good set of preguntas that you can use this one simple sort of formula for, ¿verdad? Like I mentioned, la próxima semana we're going to take a deeper dive into los números and how to uh, say big numbers, small numbers, and how they're used in the context of this información demográfica, which we saw up here in the context of vital signs and uh, probably a few other things as well. Oh, dates as well, okay? Bien. Entonces, muchas gracias. Gracias por estar aquí conmigo hoy. Thanks again for supporting Eliana and her little dog treats business. Um, and uh, juntos, mejoramos comunidades. Hasta la próxima semana. Adios. Thank you for joining me today on this video Viernes lesson. I wanted to invite you to join our community if you're not a member of the Facebook group already that I deliver these live lessons in on most every Friday. And also point you to the website where you can find a bunch more information about medical Spanish, whether that be courses or free materials for you or finding a private tutor to work with you online or face to face. And also let you know about some amazing Spanish immersion programs, either you as a medical person or your significant other as working in some other industry or your family. If you want to improve your Spanish and you have time and budget to go do some travel, our programs are pretty amazing. I think it'd be fun to work with you. And finally, if you have some document work at your clinic or at your hospital or within your setting that needs to be professionally translated, shoot me a message. Upload your document to us and we can get you a quick quote and help you out with your uh, Spanish language documents as well. Have a great day.